been on my own for a minute Is it only me out here? No one seems to think that I fit in But I don't wanna be like them No, cause I don't wanna be like them Cause I know that I, know that I I had a dream that someday I would just lie Hey there and welcome to an interesting analysis in this week's quick podcast of Airbus Zero E. Now for my friend today to join me for this quick podcast, P Express Airline. Do check his channel out for some great space flight simulator videos, including this cool one on Starship, the next big thing. What is Zero E? Zero E is an initiative announced most recently by Airbus on the 21st of September 2020. So far, no official legally binding contracts have been signed as part of this initiative, and this is the result of small-scale studies on all forms of energy to power the future of zero-emission flight. Airbus has set themselves up to commit to this goal. Eventually, having studied hybrid, electric, hydrogen, Airbus selected hydrogen. More of that later when we discuss the advantages and disadvantages. I would like to point out the three interesting concepts presented here, two of which seem similar to today's aircraft, while one is a radical new configuration, starting with the turbofan design. Similar turbofan engines to A320neo and similar size as well to the A320neo, just that on this turbofan, the engines have been modified to run off hydrogen as a source of fuel and convert that to jet thrust. Airbus claimed such a design would carry between 120 to 200 passengers between a comfortable two-class and a cramped budget airline layout, respectively, with range of 2,000 nautical miles, perfect for replacing the A320 serving domestic routes today. Besides the new propulsion system, as can be seen in these shots, the aircraft seems to feature the new free hinged wingtips first seen on the Albatross demonstrator. These essentially act as load alleviation built into the wing's design, allowing more weights to be carried while reducing drag and allow the aircraft to cope better in turbulence, reducing fuel burn further. For even shorter routes, a new turbo prop was also shown, seating up to 100 passengers to around 1,000 nautical miles. Interestingly, that's more range and more seats than the biggest ATR today, the ATR 72-600, which only carries up to 78 to 825 nautical miles. You might be wondering, how will Airbus develop their first small turboprop? Not to worry as they own 50% of European turboprop manufacturer ATR. Yes, ATR is a joint venture between Leonardo and Airbus, so they could partner up with Leonardo to develop this future aircraft. The third one though is a more ambitious design, the new blended wing concept. It will also take up to 200 passengers for early versions and fly further at more than 2,000 nautical miles. This this configuration however provides the greatest potential for expandability, with the wide fuselage allowing more space to store hydrogen fuel cells. With larger blender wing bodies, more passengers will be able to carry it with more fuel tanks, meaning no sacrifice of range for payload while the new white cabin will allow for radically new interiors as seen in this Aerospace Concept 2030 video. The aircraft would extensively use artificial intelligence and augmented reality in the cabin. So a win-win-win design then. Airbus says that the first hydrogen-powered aircraft could be put into service by 2035. Those challenges would need to be overcome. Hello, I'm P Express. You might think that why using hydrogen as fuel is related to rockets. It started off from the Cold War period between the Russians and Americans. Both countries wanted to achieve the goal of landing astronauts on the lunar surface. The Russians built the N1 rocket, but it was a big, big failure as none of the four N1 rockets get out from the atmosphere. Opposite Italy, the NASA started off the Apollo program to build the historic Saturn V rockets. Six of the all launches, they let the astronauts land and jump on the moon. For both countries, they figured out how to use 
kerosene as fuel and use a gas generator open cycle engine, which is to release the pressurized fuel inside a tank to spin a turbine inside a gas generator to make a higher thrust. It seems good, but since the fuel after spinning turbine would dump overboard, such that the efficiency isn't high enough, just like planes, you don't want a fuel wasting engine, so that they both wanted to create a closed cycle engine to achieve a higher efficiency. For the Russians, they built an oxidizer rich closed cycle engine, which means they used more amounts of liquid oxygen as oxidizer. It can overcome the overly high temperature when the engine is burning kerosene in closed cycle. For the Americans, they could not fix the high temperature problem if they used kerosene as fuel, so that they figured out why not to use hydrogen as fuel and create a fuel-rich closed cycle engine. As burning hydrogen have a lower temperature, hydrogen rich isn't that hurt for the engines. You now understand what I mean. For example, the Saturn V rockets use the F1 engines for the bottom stage. It is a kerosene gas generator open cycle engine. You can see the flames from the engine is so sooty. The second and the third stage they use the J2 engines, which are burning hydrogen. Even the space shuttle main engine, R25, was burning hydrogen. And also, the most efficient FECOM engine using now by the United States is the R10 engines, which is also using hydrogen. You now clearly see why Airbus using hydrogen as fuel. Here is the advantages. First off, it is nearly zero emission. Now planes are using A2 jet fuel, or you can call it, it is a lower defined kerosene. And it will release a lot of carbon suits while burning them. For the hydrogen, it reacts with oxygen so that it will produce water. So that the jet engine which using hydrogen as fuel will only emit water vapor, basically. Second off, the engine works in a much lower temperature because of the characteristics of hydrogen. The temperature of burning hydrogen is much lower than kerosene, which is benefits for less corrosion to the engine. Third off, it is quite easy to collect. Although we cannot collect efficiently uh, in the air because there is only very small amount. Actually, we can use the electrolysis process to get hydrogen from water using electricity. I think that's all for the advantages. But I think actually there are a lot of disadvantages. Am I right? Here are the challenges. The cost of producing hydrogen fuels would need to be significantly reduced, and Airbus has called on the energy producers to find new innovations and lower costs. Airbus stated this is not just like any other new aircraft program, but a movement towards a new future for aviation, and the industry has to show support. Airports must be ready and equip themselves with new infrastructure to refill and store hydrogen fuels, while airlines must be ready to accept such new technologies. Governments must increase funding into research and development, and Airbus cannot do it alone. Airbus, however, stated their highest priority is safety, stating they will integrate this new environmentally friendly fuel while maintaining the high level of safety expected for an aviation industry. They would have to work with regulators to establish new certification requirements for hydrogen powered aircraft. Now, the disadvantages. While hydrogen could be stored in cryogenic form, superchilled hydrogen, meaning denser hydrogen allowing more of it to be packed into the cells, and it has roughly three times the energy density of fuel, meaning for one gram of hydrogen, it produces the equivalent to three grams of fuel in terms of energy, it does still take up more space. Thus, larger fuel cells will be needed, taking up more space, meaning a larger fuselage which increases weight and drag. One characteristic of this new generation airplanes are the long aft section right behind the rear pressure bulkhead. That's where the fuel cells would be for the turbofan and turboprop. The blended wing body could actually be the most optimized design-wise for hydrogen, perhaps the reason why Airbus is performing flight tests with the Maverick to study the aerodynamic and handling qualities of such a configuration. In a conclusion, yes, hydrogen is a good fuel. You can have nearly zero emission using them. But there are also bunches of problems like it is explosive and it is expensive etc. Maybe it is good for the environment but not for humans and economics.
In a point of view, why not concentrate on electric engines? It is truly zero emission, even no water vapor comes out. And also, you can charge the planes in flight. Although it might have a lower thrust, I think technology actually can overcome after time, just like full electric cars. Originally, people think that it is not possible. Battery cannot support those instant high voltage, but Tesla made it happen. Even some of the types are racing cars. How's your perspective? All in all, hydrogen in my view is the right way to go, until a new generation of cheaper batteries make their way to the market. Hydrogen is more scalable for short, medium, and long range. It's a simpler substitute for jet fuel, while batteries will be the ultimate step. Hydrogen too has its potential. Hydrogen in my view is the best way to go medium to long haul for larger aircraft applications. The battery technology would of course most definitely improve and we should nevertheless integrate either batteries, hydrogen or other forms of alternative fuels into commercial aviation in order for it to remain relevant. Overall though, this is a really interesting project and one I cannot wait to see take flight. The aviation must move to go from transporting people around the world allowing new connections to be made worldwide to transporting people around the world in an environmentally sustainable manner, keeping it relevant in the future where more pressure is put on carbon emissions. I think that's all for today. Um, but before the ending, let's simply promote my podcast here. You can listen in various platforms like Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc. Also, on my podcast platform, I have an episode with AP that we chat about future planes versus future rockets. If you want to know more what we're thinking about, welcome to chat that episode out. I think the link is in the description, or you can simply search my name, P Express, as the name of the podcast. Thanks for watching, and to meet next time, hopefully flying in hydrogen-powered aircraft. Wishing, Wishing everyone, everyone a truly clear sky ahead.